Welcome to the 210 Nerds. As always, my name is Max James. It's day 18 of the 31 Days of Fright Horror Movie Project Year 2. And tonight I'll be watching one of the few movies that I picked personally that I have not seen. The House at the End of the Street, the unrated cut. Uh, stars Jennifer Lawrence and Elizabeth Shue. Um, I mainly picked this movie because of the cast. I I know little about what the movie's about, and that's a good thing to me. So I'm just going to jump right into watching it. And as always, I'll be right back in a few seconds to tell you what you need to know about this movie. Last night, I watched House at the End of the Street, the unrated cut. My first initial reaction was, after viewing this movie, was it was pretty good. I didn't regret watching it. Um, It might warrant a review further down the line, but it it has at least a couple years pass between viewings for this for me. But I have a lot to say in order to tell you what you need to know about this movie. And first up is the story. The story of the movie follows this these two parents who were viciously murdered by their daughter and the daughter just disappears and flash forward four years when Elizabeth Shue and Jennifer Lawrence they move in a house very close to the the house where this murder occurred and because that the rent went down and property values are going down because of this house and through dialogue and parents just kind of complaining that this house needs to be torn down or set on fire and stuff like that. It just, they seem more, and it's pretty funny through through dialogue. they like, where do we keep our pitchforks and torches? I thought that was pretty funny. And then that night, they after they settled in, um, the mom sees a light come on in the house and realizes that the house isn't quite as empty as they were told. And they learn that Ryan Jacobson, the son of the family who was not present at the house at the time of the murder was actually living with his aunt somewhere like up north or somewhere and so he finally come home to fix up the house and live and they they keep trying to buy the land and just things aren't working out for the rest of the people and he's constantly tormented due to what happened and there's no sympathy towards him whatsoever and because they're more worried about their property values, and it's just uh, this guy is just having a tough time. And Jennifer Lawrence, she's kind of fitting into her new home after moving from Chicago, and it's just all kind of fitting into place slowly. Um, she's invited to this party, and she doesn't quite fit in, and so she starts walking home, and that's when our first initial interaction between. Our main characters, um, she's walking home and she gets scared because she doesn't know who it is and he reveals it's Ryan Jacobson, next door neighbor. And then he's like, it's going to rain shortly. And he's like, no, I'll be fine. Shortly after he takes off, it starts raining. So she's forced to catch a ride with him. And through this, the initial spark started to fly and they kind of started to um a relay and not really just started hanging out a little bit more and mom kind of not like no you can't be in the house by themselves and she does it anyways and that le- that really leads to kind of a um climactic end at the end of the movie which i have to stop here in telling you the rest of the story because when I start really diverging into um, rest of Max's background, uh, not Max's, but um, Ryan Jacobson's background, it starts to get into spoiler territory, and I don't do spoilers um, to a point, but this this movie is very spoiler heavy when you get to a certain point in the movie. So I'm just going to stop there. I do recommend you watching this movie, So, um, which leads to my next category. The cast, the cast of this movie was actually pretty good. Um, you got Jennifer Lawrence, um, you got Elizabeth Shue, Max Thoreau. I think he is from the movie My Soul to Take, uh, directed by Wes Craven. I, I'm not 110% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that's where I've seen him from. So, I mean, the cast is actually pretty decent. Um, the acting is pretty decent. Um, then, 
leads me to my next category, the visuals. The visuals of this movie, is, it's not visually striking. I mean, cause it's just very um, out middle of the woods kind of feel to it. But this one particular shot that happened periodically throughout the movie is when they use a kind of higher grain video and makes it look very reminiscent of an old horror movie uh, and it brings the Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of feel to it when they kind of do these close-ups and it's super grainy and kind of has this VHS tape to it and it's pr a pretty nice little touch here and there and I wish they kind of done more with that a little bit but it's it's uh, that's really all I gotta say um, I'll get more into how, how this movie feels um, once I get my, through my classification scale, one through five, one being run in the mill horror, two best ones with the group, three more than average horror, but adds nothing new to the horror genre, four moves the horror genre forward, and five being a horror classic. Now, House at the End of the Street, it's definitely a two. It's best watch with the group because it has a date movie feel to it. Um, it really does feel like it's something you would go to the movie theaters to see when this movie came out, and and also all on V on DVD and Blu-ray, whatever. It has that more group feeling kind of watching mentality. Like uh, it's not not in the riff tracks kind of way. It just feels like more of a date movie. It's best that's the best way I can describe it. It's it's a date movie. And with all that being said, my name is Max James, and I'm going to go geek out. <laughs>